One of the things that we talk about a lot at Marriage Helper is commitment and the commitment to saving your marriage, the commitment to a strong family, the commitment that hopefully you have to leaving a legacy that is worth leaving, a legacy that matters. And this year, Marriage Helper is a sponsor at what is called the Commitment Summit, as you see behind us. We're actually in Costa Rica right now, and we are networking and hosting, helping to host this conference with business owners because we are committed in multiple, multiple areas and multiple facets of helping to save marriages. And so I'm giving a keynote speech tomorrow morning talking about our four stages to falling in love. But I wanted to take some time with our director of marketing, Phil, and we've just been connecting with people and listening to them and understanding, getting to understand what their marriages are like as business owners, understanding what their struggles are in relationships. And it's been such a joy and a pleasure to do so. Absolutely. It has. And, you know, um, we are definitely as a company, but as a family of those who are committed to saving marriages, we yeah. want to help marriages at any stage in their life. Yeah. While we primarily help those in crisis, what we teach can help business owners here and entrepreneurs and those who are committed to their staff really make a, an influence on their communities and yeah. in their families, which families is a huge thing here, right? Absolutely. JC and Karen have their kids here. Your kids are here and they're yeah. running around, they're having fun. But we are committed not only to the marriage, but to the families associated with. Uh, let's talk about some of the common things we hear from people here talk, when they talk about their marriage. Uh, let's bring up the gentleman we had lunch with the other day. Mm -hmm. um, he talked about he had gone through this journey of self-reflection and self-recovery, and he felt like his wife just didn't understand him anymore. Yeah. Can you walk me through that conversation just a bit? Yeah. It's, it's one of the things that we commonly hear in, well, I wouldn't say it's the most common one we hear, it's, it, but it's one of the things that we do hear where someone says, I've changed, I've gone through a process of changing and my spouse doesn't agree with it or they don't know what to think of me anymore or they don't, I feel like they don't accept me anymore. Typically when we get to ask further questions like we did yesterday, what we end up finding out and understanding is there's likely a much deeper issue going on. Wow. It's not your change if it's a positive change. It's not your positive change that's led them to all of a sudden not like you anymore. There's likely been a history of either in their past from their childhood or uh, from adolescence. A, a fear of being abandoned or the fact that they were abandoned or some issues that have gone on there. In that specific situation, the wife had also experienced several losses over the past several years. And so it, it, she is dealing with a lot. He was saying, the husband was saying, she's just very angry. And we had the opportunity to, to speak with him and say, anger is always the outcome of an underlying pain. So where might she be hurting? Where is she frustrated? Where does she maybe feel like she's not getting what she needs or that? And so it's some of those reflections and those questions. It's easy to enter into a situation and talking about your relationship and, and see and note and name everything that's going on with the, with the other person. We tend to want to view everything we've done as being great and everything the other person has done as being less than up to par, right? That's just human nature. But it's, it ha now this is true of every situation at Marriage Helper. When people come to us and they just wanna say, if my spouse would just change. And what we have the opportunity and ability to do is say, your spouse probably does need to change some things, but so do you. Hmm. Because all of us have an opportunity to change. Even when we are the best we can be, We've never arrived. None of us have ever arrived. It's always a work in progress to become an even better person. And so that that was one of the frustrations yesterday. There, But there have been others. I mean, people who are saying, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to make my business work while not sacrificing the time with my family. I'm trying to figure out how I can bring my family into my business so that I, I'm not flies, flies everywhere in Costa Rica, so that I am i don't feel like I'm serving two things or I'm trying to find this perfect work-life balance. I mean, it, there's, there's a lot of different pain points here. There are a lot of different pain points here. And I was talking to one couple from Melbourne, Australia, and they work together in business. Originally, it was her business and she had the opportunity to hire her husband. Mm. Actually, I heard two people say they were able to hire their spouse and it, it's helped them so much. But there are so many other things that like we say, if you don't have clarity on and clarity on your your marriage and clarity on what issues you may be bringing to the table, yeah. it could not it could 
become a disaster. And when you're running a business, it could become a disaster not only for you, but for the people you serve, your clientele, or your, right. your own employees, your team members, when you bring family. And now we have the opportunity to actually, you and your father are in the company. So it is like working true. with family. Like we have- I've worked with family for 11 years. <laughs> there are funny moments, which we will never show the light of day, but family is family. And it, yes. so it brings some extra stress to the table and it's only expounded on when it's your spouse. Absolutely. So we, but with that couple from Melbourne, they were able to travel the world and be able to live in, I think she said they moved 44 times before mm. they finally settled in Australia, but they, they're committed to working together. And so where we're trying to help them out is to maintain that. So mm -hmm. when you are in a healthy place, how can we help prevent that? How can we help really show you the ropes of building trust correctly so that you can increase your passion and intimacy for each other. Yeah. And so the business also doesn't fail. Ultimately, if the business fails, we hope that the marriage doesn't right. because there is always hope. And we don't believe, uh, we don't believe that divorce is the end. That's right. We are fighting against a divorce industry and so thankful for the Heights having us out and seeing that in their mission and in their passion for their team members. Yeah, absolutely. Which is phenomenal to see. Absolutely. So one of the other pain points we hear is, I come home exhausted mm. and I feel like my spouse just doesn't understand how much stress I'm in mm -hmm. in trying to get my dream off the ground. They don't support me in my dream. How do we combat that? How do we show them that yeah. Their commitment to their spouse is just as important and more important than their commitment to their to their mission or to their job. Yeah, this is one of the things I'm going to be speaking about tomorrow as well, because I know that this is such a big pain point. I actually had someone tell me a couple of weeks ago, they said, I know what I'm supposed to do with my life. And this person was a Christian. So they said, I know what God has called me to do with my life. And I am not going to let my spouse stand in the way. Like I would mm. rather give up my marriage and do what I know God has called me to do than to feel shackled and held back by it. And that was so hard for me to hear because I know that, that if there's just a reframe, if we can just get that couple on the same page with what I'm about to say, then everything would change for them. And, it, and that is the following. When a couple... When, when a husband and wife, and let's just say in this situation, it's the husband who's the, who's the business owner, or the entrepreneur, or the one with the big dream. When he's going off and trying to make that happen, if the wife doesn't feel like she's a part of it, or if she doesn't see the benefit to her and to the family, then it's always going to be the enemy. Whatever her husband is doing is always going to be the enemy. And, it, and it's not gender specific. It could be the wife who's the entrepreneur. Like in my family, I'm definitely the business person and the entrepreneur. And if my husband felt like it didn't benefit him, like it was his enemy, it was like work was my mister <laughs> and the thing that I was continuing to go to, then it would become the enemy and it would become a place and a source of resentment. And so what has to happen is there we find a way in the couple that they can begin to see what is the bigger picture? Because is it really just about growing a business to seven, eight, nine figures and then what? No, it's typically not about the money. It's typically about the impact that they want to make or about the impact it can have to their family. It's not about the money that their family even gets necessarily. It's about the things they're going to be able to do together as a family. But that's okay. typically not what they focus on. They're not focusing on the bigger vision. They're not focusing on the bigger mission and how it helps them as a family. So at Marriage Helper, for example, we have a mission to support, save, and strengthen marriages. We want to save marriages. We want to eradicate divorce. We want to save millions of marriages. We want, I heard John Maxwell yesterday say this, and I haven't even talked to my team about it yet, but I was like, this is the key. This is the key. Uh, if you can get 10% of a population to buy into something, yes. it begins to oh. change the culture. And I thought, we just need 10% of those million marriages to be saved for us to begin to change the divorce culture. Like that's what that. we need. And so a hundred thousand, we could do that. That's right. Yeah, that's right. A hundred thousand, a hundred thousand. Like that's a mission worthy of committing to. It's a mission worthy of, of my focus and my time. But what about my family? 
Mm. How does my family play into that mission? Because it's going to take a lot of my energy and attention. And I can't let my own marriage end in divorce because I'm so focused on eradicating divorce. Like that can't be true. So what do we do? It's the conversation with my husband and with my kids of how does the impact of saving marriages impact us? What will we be able to do with that? How will that impact us as a family? How can we do it together? That's why my family's here in Costa Rica with me. They're here. My husband goes with me on the conferences that I go to because we have to spend time together. And ultimately, like we want to be able, one, so some of the, the aspirations that my husband and I have is we love travel. That's one of the things that brought us together. It's one of the things that keeps us together. But we, we're both explorers at heart. And that's something we just want to do. And we want to bring our kids in it with us. When I was growing up, my dad was a very successful speaker. I mean, all of you know Dr. Joe Beam. Well, he was speaking literally every single month. There was one, there was actually one summer when I was in probably third or fourth grade where he flew out to Texas every single week of the summer because he was the interim pre, and we lived in Georgia, and he was the interim preacher at a church for like four to five months. So, and he, he just would fly out there. Well, I would travel with my parents on all of my dad's speaking things. I mean, I missed school. When my dad had to go to Australia for his PhD program when I was a junior in high school, I left school for a month in April and went and lived in Australia for that month with my parents. So that's part of what I grew up with. It's part of yes. what made my family strong. And it's part of what I want my kids to experience as well and, and my husband to experience with me as well. And so that's part of it for us. It's how can we, in our mission to save marriages, also go and explore new things as a family and have new adventures. And while we're there, how can we impact people while we're there? So that's one part of what it looks like to bring it in. And so then instead of it being, oh, I have to go off to another conference in Costa Rica and the kids kids and my husband just dreading one more time because it's another thing that the company is taking away from him. It turns into how do we like, let's, we're all going as a family. So it becomes something exciting. It becomes something that we get to do together and bringing the kids along with it. So there's a reframing that has to happen, but even a deeper conversation of what is the impact we want to have as a couple? What is the impact we want our marriage to have? What do we want to do together? And how can we use the business or the career or whatever it is to just help fuel that bigger mission? 100%, 100%. And I say it that way because we have a friend also here mm -hmm. uh, who their aspiration was to travel. But as soon as they had kids, they're like, we need to settle down. But as soon as they started building the family, they're like, but well, we wanna do missions. Yes. And the more they dug into it, and then, he got his pilot's license, but mm -hmm. then he had to learn. He had to get certified in multiple locations and multiple, multiple languages. He ended up staying home. He's like, I don't want to be away from my family. Yeah. And so much so his wife's like, can you teach me to fly? Can that be our next aspirational goal? Love so it. they are, they were hamming it up with Rob last night That's right. because he is an <laughs> aviator at heart and going through some of the same course materials, yeah. but that's what happens. But, okay. I'm glad you brought that part up. Yes. So my husband, Rob, many of you know, in the military, he was a helicopter pilot, but he is starting in the fall of 2023 to go back to school and, be get, and get his commercial license. So he flew helicopters. Now it's going to be fixed wings anyway. So when we were talking about that decision a couple of months ago and praying about it and, and because realizing this is going to be a huge time commitment on his part. And it's definitely going to affect our family. And he called people and who were who he knows that are pilots and asked, "How has this affected your family life?" And every one of them said, "It's incredibly hard. You're gonna be gone on Christmas. You're gonna be gone on New Year's. The first couple of years, like you're gonna get the worst shifts and the worst of everything. But once you get past that, free flights." <laughs> And for you, that's very important. <laughs> so <laughs> we were like, this plays into our mission as a fan. Like this is part of, and I, and I know it's something he loves. So clearly I support him because of that. Clearly it's important to me. I want him to get the fuel and the, that passion in his own life. But there was a bigger part of it, which is this can actually help our family in the goals that we have of traveling and making an impact when we travel and not having to pay for those errors. <laughs> Like, so it, it helped make the decision. It, it gives filters in which you make your decisions. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, 
you and I have a very similar children's, how we both have children now story. And that, I think we both played into that. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, I don't know if we talked about this when my wife was on the podcast, but my wife, uh, tomorrow you're gonna be talking about the love path. Mm -hmm. And for our, our regular list and our regular viewers of YouTube and on the podcast, they, they know what the, the love path is. They should. I, they if you should. Don't, if you don't go listen, to, go listen to, uh, what the love path is, but there's a, the acceptance piece of that for mm. me that led into the aspirational. So the acceptance uh. I had to have for my wife's heart condition that she could not bear children yeah it's not the end of the world we don't need to bear our own children because there are so many kids and families that need Absolutely. that we were able to adopt our child who just celebrated for her fourth birthday which god god help me that's right uh, <laughs> she is a it. firecracker of god a four-year-old i can um, tell you that but it let us that you know knowing that that was part of our story mm -hmm. like well what do we want to do about it well okay here's our next goal our next goal was back in 2015, 2016, whatever it was, we we're going to adopt. What does that look like for us? That's mm -hmm. gonna look a little differently at the time. Mm -hmm. We were in ministry, working a smaller paying job. You know, we were both working full time, mm -hmm. but through, through certain events, I was able to actually move to the Nashville area and support this family and actually grow. You know, we, we were able to grow our life together through that aspiration, but now we're also able to support others who are looking to adopt. Yeah. That's one of our missions yes. is to help other families connect. Yeah. And then by coming on the team at Marriage Helper for a year now, we're able to sync up and realize how many of our own friends have been affected by divorce. Yeah. Uh, there was a person I, I knew back in middle school who reached out to me just over a year ago saying, wait, you're with Marriage Helper? Marriage Helper saved my marriage. Which there is no... It, it's a shock to me. It was a it was a shock to me when I when I finally learned what you were doing and what the company was doing yeah. of how bad the world is. Mm. When a world that throws away relationships, the messages I'm getting, clients I'm talking to, how easy it is for people to just walk away because their divorce lawyer wants to make a couple extra bucks. Yeah, I'm not anti-divorce lawyer. I'm just anti-divorce industry, yeah. which is very. I like people. So <laughs> if you're a divorce lawyer, we love, we love people, we do. <laughs> but I don't believe divorce is the end. It, right. In your parents' story, divorce is not the end. In Jordan right. Priscilla's story, divorce is not the end. Marcus and, Marcus and, Lisa. and Elisa, divorce is not the end. That's right. Even for those who are still standing, Gemma on our team led an amazing, amazing team Devo this morning about her story. And she is a long time stander but she has peace. She has reconciled with herself. And her story is just a phenomenal one of strength oh, and character yes. and just resilience. Yeah. And she leads that. And all of us yeah. now have our own story. All of us are super passionate yeah. about saving marriage because for us, it's not just somebody we may know. I have multiple family members who have gotten divorced. What if they had known about this? What if they yeah. believed in the saving grace that is what we teach? Yeah. Most of that through our workshop. Yeah, absolutely. One of the other things that we learned the other day when John Maxwell was teaching was he was talking about the difference between setting goals and being. Having up uh, uphill hopes and down. Well, yes, there's that too. Habits. <laughs> uphill hopes and downhill habits, which is a great one. Which is a great. And great, a great teaching. Great teacher. And it, it does tie in with this. I mean, he talked about how for several years for him, and of course, all of you are going to know, I'm sure, who John Maxwell is, but he's a very accomplished speaker, very accomplished author. And he talked about how for years he was setting goals. So I want to do this next. I want to do that next. But it shifted at some point to where he said, I, when you do yeah, there's always something next. After you accomplish the goal, there's always a next goal to set. And I won't get into my diatribe from my PhD studies on, on goal setting. Uh, the, all of that is very healthy. But what's even healthier, I believe, is the mindset he got into, which is I want to be a growth-minded person. I want to have a goal so big that it's never achievable because it's someone I'm always growing into. And so while it's important to have goals for your marriage, it's equally, if not more important, to continue to want to grow 
as a wife, as a husband, mm. to have your marriage to grow because you're never going to achieve it. That's when the problems happen. The problems happen when you get in the mindset of check, I'm married, check. It's not something you check off the box. Mm -hmm. It's not a race that you complete until you die. It like it is something that is constantly you constantly work on. And so he talked about there being the uphill hopes. hopes. So your uphill dreams, the kind of marriage you want to have, the kind of wife or husband you want to be, the kind of parent you want to be. Those are the uphill hopes that you have. And it takes hard work to go uphill. It's never going to come easy. There is no magic pill. A guy yesterday was telling us that he signed up for some other marriage person's email list. And they were like, he was just telling me that if I just said this phrase, my wife would come back. It is not that easy. Those are lies. They're gimmicks. Unsubscribe. That's all you have to do. Unsubscribe. But we end up having the downhill habits, which are the things that are much easier to do, to just continue to have criticisms instead of compliments, to continue to have our same poor tone and personality with our spouse, to continue to do the pushes and the things we know are pushing our spouse away. But it's, hey, it's who we are, right? Like, this is just who I am. That's the excuse we often use. But those are the downhill habits. To continue to pick up your phone and scroll when your kids are trying to talk to you at the end of the day, when your spouse is trying to look you in the eye and have a conversation. Those are the downhill habits. So how can we eradicate the downhill habits so that we can get our uphill hopes. And that's what we can help you do at Marriage Helper. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this has been a wonderful conversation. We yeah. continue to come. We're only recording 20 to 30 minutes of actually how much we talk about when we're learning and talking to people just like you. So if you're in a place where you, you need hope, borrow some of Kimberly's, borrow some of mine, sure. borrow our hope, because divorce is not the end. There is always hope. If you want to attend an upcoming workshop, visit marriagehelper.com slash workshops, where we can help you get clarity on the issues going on, learn to better communicate, rebuild trust with your spouse, and then that aspirational phase of the love path, build your dream life together. Kimberly, this has been a wonderful conversation. Yeah, there's one more thing I wanna say. Absolutely. I just want, I want you to know, you have to know this, that we are committed to saving marriages. We just are. And we hope that yours is one of them. Thank you for joining us. Please remember to like and subscribe and share this with somebody who also needs hope today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching.